Today, I'm going to share with you a bedtime story that's really unique in the area of cancer. It's called The Fall of King Tumor. And the idea here is to help educate in the most simple way how cancers grow and doing it in a bedtime story format. Oftentimes, my kids ask me, Dad, what do you do? And some of the little ones don't understand. So I thought I'd put a bedtime story together that could help explain this. So imagine a village that's been taken over by a cruel king. He drains the wells, hoards the grain, and sends it to the court to conquer neighboring towns. We could torch the whole place and hope for the best, which is what we see in standard chemotherapy, or we could slip in at night, free from the people, and help them rise up from the inside, rebuild the immune system to fight the cancer. That's the heart of today's story. So I'm Dr. Dino Prado. For the last 25 years, we've helped patients who failed the top hospitals across the country get out of guesswork and get into precision care. So today, I'm going to give you a bedtime story that's simple, but with a serious message and why it's so important to have these clear paths to cancer treatment with precision care. Once there was a peaceful village, fields filled with grain, clear water, happy families, and King Tumor arrived. He built a fortress in the square, hijacked the markets, and diverted every road to himself. He paid off a few guards, rewrote the town's rules. The village was still full of good people, farmers, builders, healers, your healthy cells, your immune system, sentinels ready to go to work. They were tied up, confused, and scared, but they were still there. Cancer doesn't create life, it steals it. It redirects the resources, blocks the roads, silences the local news or the immune signals. Our job in precision oncology is to give the village back to its people. Three ways to fight a tyrant. Number one, surgery, the siege. Great, when the king is isolated in a small, clear tower, but if he's already woven into the homes and gardens and it's spread, tearing out areas, breaking wells, pulling down houses, scattered his henchmen, now that surgery isn't going to be as effective. We can't just take them out. For example, in a prostate cancer, you can have these robotic surgeries that happen and a patient can go into remission for many years and then you can have 30% of them return with the cancer. The PSA is rising, now it's spread to the bone and we could see the same thing with breast cancer. You might have gotten surgery or mastectomy, lumpectomy, done chemotherapy just to find that it came back within a year or two. And the reason for that is the same thing is that the surgery isn't the answer on its own. We need to know if the cancer is contained or it's moved out. And in the same analogy here with the story, if that tumor is spread out and it's going everywhere else, it's not going to work. So we need to enact the immune system and then change the care. You can also use another strategy. We call this the scorch earth in the story. You can burn out the fortresses, but embers can drift and the soil can be hurt. Some good villagers can catch flame and suffer long after the battle. This is where we look at high dose chemotherapy that goes in and really kills healthy or Organ, central nervous system, nausea, vomiting, brain fog, but with no targeting. So we're not even knowing if we're getting the kill we want. 90% of the patients we've seen, and we've talked about this, and it's in our actuarial data, were on the wrong chemotherapy when arriving at our facility when we did precision testing. So let's talk about that. Our next approach can be a precision uprising or targeted care. This is where we use snipers, small teams that work directly at the tumor. Think of a small tumor. We know it hasn't spread because we have the data. We run circulating tumor cells, CT-free DNA, methylation. We know it's localized to one area. We don't even need to do surgery. We can freeze it. It's called cryoablation. Or we can chemoembolize it, go right into the tumor with a catheter as small as a hair, cut the blood supply, deliver the chemotherapy, shut it off. It's done. It's killed. The king's supply roads have been shut down. We delivered a potent message direct to the cancer with minimal to no collateral damage. And now the patient is in remission and we can continue to monitor that. That's a powerful strategy. That's what should be done in earlier stage cancers. But once we know that cancer spread, now we use the same precision targeting to help the patient. We run DNA so we can see the exact genetic mutations to that cancer. RNA transcriptome so we know what are the drivers to the cancer. So we know all the roads, all the villages, all the houses that King Tumor is trying to attack and shut them down. And then we build immune spatial biology. So now we build the immune system to go in with targeted snipers and take the cancer out and teach all the villagers where the king tumor is and any of his men so they can do the rest of taking that out and have the memory of that so they continue to do it over time. And this is done through sending a smoke signal through the village called DAMPS, Damage Associated Molecular Patterns. So every time you kill a tumor or a cancer cell, it can release these DAMPS. And these DAMPS are an immune-centric approach to killing cancer. So if you use targeted low-dose chemo, you're going to get DAMPS working in your favor. If 
you use high dose chemotherapy, you'll get too many damps, too much inflammation, and oftentimes you'll spread the wildfire, spreading more of the tumor instead of killing it. See, that's the difference. So that explains it. But if we get the right targets, microdosed, immune centric, or get direct to tumor and rebuild the immune system, now we've taught the villagers how to kill the cancer and the immune system comes in and does the job and remove King's tumor's ability to spread. So we do this through chemoembolization, direct to tumor, like I just mentioned. We also do this by having genetically targeted fractionated chemotherapy, which is low dose targeted exactly for the patient with the goal of stimulating micro damps and stimulating immunity. So this is all immune centric care. So this is so important. We want to starve the palace, feed the messengers and less drugs, less guesswork and more targeting. So we get right to where we want to get. And it's by the small team of hidden soldiers and tunnels that we can block with the right medicines, taking down the fortress. So you bypass the crowds and streets and the storms and you deliver the payloads right to the tumor, right to the neighborhood, creating an immune centric care so that the cancer can go into remission and hold. So this is the example that's so important. The immune system, the villagers, they aren't weak. They're just misinformed. They're being misdirected. The king tumor has jammed their radios, their information. When we strike precisely, we awaken the immune system with these damps and we share with the immune system. This is where the enemy is. This is where you need to go, go do the work. And that's what these cells know how to do. That's what they do normally. They break through the fortress and we supply the T cells and the natural killer cells with the information they need to take the tumor out. With better mug shots, more information, deep mapping, the dendritic cells and the T cells now with accuracy can go after the cancer. We don't just knock down the walls. We wake the village up. We teach the body what it needs to do so that it can keep the tumors out. It can kill king tumor and take out anything that tries to come back. That's the key to long-term remission. Sometimes even after surgery and radiation, these cancers return. And that's because none of this immune information was done. So when the king's palace is fused with homes or when the quality of life hangs in the balance or when we need immunity and durability, the precision uprising is a smarter approach because it's precise. In the same example with the prostate cancer I gave you, the reality is if we know what the circulating tumor cells are and we know it hasn't spread, we can treat it, avoid surgery, use image guided cone beam right to the tumor, shut it down, avoid erectile dysfunction, urinary incontinence, quality of life is high. That's what precision does. If we can look at the breast cancer, go right at the tumor, shut it down, avoid the surgery, shut down the causative agents, the inflammation, help the patient stay in remission, hold remission, all with precision targeting, avoid the surgery, the chemo, and the radiation, cut, poison, and burn. In colon cancer, we can get right to the tumor, shut it down, change the body's immune system so that it recognizes the cancer to hold the remission. So this is why deep mapping is so important, scouting the field, the DNA, the RNA, the immune pro profiling. So when we go to battle, it's with precision, without harming the body, strengthening it, striking with precision, whether we're getting direct to tumor or freezing the tumor or chemoembolizing it or building the immune system, creating a new army of adoptive autogalous immunotherapy to fight the cancer. The key is it's immune centric. So we do this. And once we have that information, we can be microdosed, improve quality of life. This is the key. Train the town guards, train the immune system, train it so that it knows how to take the tumor out, remove the infections, chemical toxins, heavy metals that cause the problem. This is the key to shutting the roads down so that that cancer can't continue to spread. And this shuts down King tumor. So this is the key. We need to shut the tumor down. So this was my example of a small bedtime story of how to shut down King tumor and understand how it tries to grow and how we can shut it down with the immune system. I hope this was helpful and may the Lord bless you on your journey to healing.